Okay, good morning everyone. I am Dr. Monzi Bordagur, Assistant Professor, Department of Geography, Cotton University. So today in this session we are going to discuss GNSS, Global Navigation Satellite System, the working principle of GNSS, the overview of GNSS and the application of GNSS. So basically, uh, knowingly, unknowingly, we all are familiar with GNSS. So any location service you are using nowadays in your smartphones are basically a part of GNSS. So it helps us to locate us on this earth surface. So our coordinates, that XY coordinates, suppose in, in geography or in geospatial technologies, one of the main questions, major question is where. Okay, so this where to understand the where we are located, it is very important to uh, know the latitude and longitude information. And GNSS particularly help us to locate those or to give us their latitude and longitudinal information on the surface of Earth. So uh, GNSS is basically a satellite-based navigation system. So there are a number of satellites which are uh, located in the space in the specific orbits and they you know send us some range based measurement through radio signals which help us to get the xy coordinates for instance if you try to see that uh, prior to this invention uh, you know uh, the navigators the sailors you know in the medieval period or you know in a later period also they use the celestial ob observation Celestial measurements, looking into the stars, they, they used to, you know, locate themselves. But there are some difficulties while you are trying to locate yourself on the basis of the celestial objects. Because sometimes they may be visible, sometimes they may not be visible due to overcast, uh, you know, sky and all these things. So the point is that we have actually replaced those celestial objects from this satellite-based navigation system, where we have sent some man-made satellites into the space and place them in some specific orbits so that they can continuously communicate with the users on the surface of the earth and they will be able to uh, locate themselves at any point of time without any interruption. So this is the basic idea about GNSS. Why, why GNSS? You know, you know how it works actually. So why GNSS? This is the main question. Why we have to replace those celestial objects with uh, these man-made satellites? Because we need 24 hours, 24 into 7, all weather information regarding that question where, okay, where we are. So for this, you know, uninterrupted locational services, we need this GNSS, Global Navigation Satellite System. Another, another point is that it is extremely accurate because it is based on the radio signals. So we can get very precise locations, you know, up to a sub-centimeter level location in some time. So that, you know, any point of time you, you would like to come back to your previous, uh, previous location, you will be accurate by the centimeter scale. So that is the level of accuracy we can achieve. Precise time also, it helps us to get the precise time also. The precise time, which is also known as a coordinated universal time, uh, it is mentioned as UPC in your study material. So it is within 60 nanosecond to 5 nanosecond. That is the accuracy. Okay, 10 to the power 8. So that is the accuracy of the time we can get with the help of GNSS. Okay, uh, why it is so important and why we can get some uninterrupted information regarding our location? Because this GPS signal is a high frequency uh, radio wave, okay, which is 3 to 30 gigahertz. So when you have a, that such, such a high frequency uh, radio waves, it can penetrate the clouds. So that atmospheric disturbance cannot, you know, stop us getting us our location. So this is very important. Okay, it can penetrate the clouds. So in case of your overcast uh, sky or some atmospheric disturbances, you will still get, get your locational information. So that's why, you know, we have replaced that celestial object. See, now we, we, we can get uninterrupted information regarding our location. Okay, uh, continuous real-time information and accessibility to n number of worldwide users. So, if the, or everyone in the world nowadays, you can see that any point of time we, we 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 tend to keep our location service on in our smartphones. So, n number of users can access those signals without any interruption. So that's why we need this global navigation satellite system. 
in the global navigation satellite system this is a generic term which includes all such type of you know satellite communication the pi pioneering in this field was the gps global positioning system by us department of defense so they started this the first of such uh, you know initiative was taken in 1960s by us naval when they installed six satellites at a height of uh, 1000 kilometers so this was a constellation of six satellites so six satellites were placed in an orbit which is located at 1000 kilometers from the earth surface so this was a navy navigational satellite system lnss but later on uh, they uh, installed the navstar gps navigation system with time and ranging global positioning system navstar gps so this is the first of its kind you know gnss we have so uh, it was basically developed by the Department of Defense. Now, if we have a brief look over the history of GNSS, okay? I mean, the GPS, as it is the first of its kind in, in global navigation satellite system. So 1959, US Navy built that transit system, which is the naval, uh, you know, of the six satellite installation, naval GPS. 1978, the first prototype satellite of the Navstar was launched in 1978. 1983, uh, the president of US, the president of US, Ronald Reagan, he affirmed the US policy of civil use of GPS. So prior to that, that was only for the defense use. But in 1983, they promised that it will be allowed for the civilians to use the GPS signals. Mm. After that, in 1989, the first operational satellite, which is also known as a Block 2, okay, came into existence. And along with that, the civil use was allowed from 1989. So the Magellan was the first company which introduced a handheld GPS. So a handheld GPS is the device which can get the signals and give you the accurate locational services. So the same technology nowadays there in our smartphones. Okay, in our smartphones also now we'll be able to identify our locational information, the latitude, longitude, and the altitude. Uh, but in 1990s, uh, US they slashed the sum of this precision of the GPS system. Okay, uh, it was kind of a selective availability. So they allowed the high frequency waves to be captured only by the defense, US defense. For the civilian use, they have reduced at that point of time, they reduced the precision of that uh, locational services. But in 2000, they uh, you know, removed those kind of uh, you know, selective uh, availability. From 2000, uh, the civilians can also get a very precise locational services. And from 2000 to 2007, they have installed many more satellites to make the constellation of this entire uh, GPS system complete. And nowadays, we can have an uninterrupted signals and from any location from the, on the Earth's surface. Uh, if you have to see the, after, you know, US, many countries initiated their own GNSS, Global Navigation Satellite Services. Uh, next to US is the Russia, okay? So there, this GNSS is known as Global Navigation Satellite System, which is GLONASS. Then Europe has its own uh, GNSS. It is in, still in the development, uh, it's going on. So it, it is known as a Galileo. China is a Bido. Okay, and for India started installing their own satellites for navigation in 2013 also. This process is going on. We do not have a fully operational GSS, GNSS yet. So it is known as a NAVI, okay, navigation with Indian constellation. And Japan also started in 2017, okay. So this is about the uh, GNSS across the countries. Now if we have to, uh, if we have to understand the working principle of GNSS, then we have to see the segments of the GPS, okay? So in case of your global positioning systems, basically we have three segments. As I have been referring, the first segment is your space segment itself, the satellites, okay? The second segment is the control segment, and the third system belongs to us, the user segment. We are the users, okay? So I'm, I'm going to discuss them one by one. Now in case of the space segment, uh, to have a full installation of this GNSS, the, mean, the requirement is more than 21 or 24 satellites. So there are six orbits. In each orbit, 
uh, four satellites, so a total of 24 satellites. So you have a full installation of this GNSS system. So more than 20,000, uh, sorry, uh, more than 20,000 kilometers and 24 satellites. Now US, recently, they crossed almost 36 because some of these uh, satellites may get old, you know, due to some technical glitch or the health of the satellite. So you have to periodically replace. So they, you know, install more and more number of satellites to get a worldwide coverage, okay? So uh, six orbital plane, most importantly, 12 hours return interval for each satellite. So from a particular location, that, that particular orbit is set in such a manner, I guess it is almost 2.5 km per second. That is the, uh, the speed of the satellite in its orbit. So it passes through the same location twice daily, okay? which help the particular from a particular location to visualize a particular satellite or to get, not visualize actually, to get the signal of a particular satellite for at least 8 to 10 hours in a day. Okay, so during that pass. Now, the space segment, uh, yes, uh, visible from any point of, uh, on the earth for about 10 hours. Okay, because it passed that particular point twice daily. Okay, with a full constellation, 4 to 12 satellites should be visible from any unobstructed locations. So this is the requirement for which actually we have to, or we have been installing more than 24 satellites. Or 31, 32 satellites, US, US 36 almost satellites, they've installed, okay? So this is because of, so that you can be, have these satellites in your ephemery for 4 to 12 satellites, okay? The high frequency band, this is L1 and L2, okay? There is no much discussion in your syllabus uh, regarding this band and its characteristics and all, but this is a high frequency, 3 to 30 gigahertz. Okay, which is more than our radio signals, I know permanent normal radio and TV, the signal, it is more than that. Okay, it's higher than that, the frequencies. Okay. Uh, satellite transmit coded signal and navigation message. This is very important, I'm coming to this, the coded signal and the message, okay, along with the carrier frequencies. But before that, we must understand the control segment and its role. Okay, now space segment is clear that 20,000 kilometer plus 20,000 kilometer, we have installed these satellites. A full constellation is 24 satellites in six orbits so that we can get an uninterrupted uh, you know, signals. So that uh, from any specific location, we can have these satellites for at least 10 hours in a day. Okay, so the oh, total orbital, this is 12 hours. Okay, so one particular satellite passes through a particular location on the Earth twice daily. So this is the space segment. Now the control segment. The master control station, basically there are uh, six, uh, five control sta uh, stations. The master control uh, station is located in the Colorado Spring, Raystar, Hawaii, Axinacin, Diego, Garcia, and Zalan. So these are the control segments. Okay. Now, what is the role of these control segments? What they do normally? So basically, uh, they are the monitoring stations for the health of the satellites. Okay? So they track the health of the satellites. Okay? They also provide the data regarding the satellite ephemeris. Now, this particular word, it's a new concept, the ephemeris. Okay? So I'm coming to describe it. What is ephemeris? Now, clock offset. You see, there is a clock offset in the satellite and the user segment. Because you see the satellite, the clock is an atomic clock. But here, we have an ordinary clock. So there, there is an offset, time offset. So they do take care of their time offset, the control segment. They correct it, okay? And send us the corrected signals. Uh, navigational messages are also uploaded by the control segments. They monitor the health of the satellites and they also look into the status of the entire satellite constellation which is known as an almanac. So what is an almanac? Almanac is the entire satellite constellation is known as an almanac. So you have to understand that the satellite, the signals, it, it sends to the master you know, control segment. Basically it sends or to our receivers also. We receive basically two signals. One is each satellite sends the data regarding the location of other satellites in the entire constellation and also 
sends a specific, very precise information about its own location. I mean the location in its orbit. Okay. So this entire constellation is the Almanac data. The specific location is the ephemeris data, where it is located at a particular point of time. So these two informations are very important for the locational service, for the GPS to work. The Almanac, the ephemeris, and the codes, the signal, the coded signal. These three things are very important. Now I'm coming to it. Next is the user segment. User segment, these are the uh, you know, specific handheld GPS. Nowadays we are having the locational service here. We can download some apps which are available in the Google services. And from those apps also we can make use of our any normal smartphone as a handheld GPS. We, can, we will be able to locate our uh, XY coordinates with the help of our smartphones also. But these are the standard handheld GPS. So this is the user segment. Okay. Now, the working principle, which is very important to understand. The working principle of the year. See, three informations. One is your almanac data, ephemeris data, and a pseudo random code. So these are the three basic things you have to understand. First is the almanac data. <coughs> it tells where each GPS satellite should be at any time throughout the day. So this is the almanac data, okay? Each satellite transmits, transmits almanac data showing the orbital information for the satellite, as I have already mentioned. Apart from its own location, each satellite sends the information regarding the other satellites, where they are located at a specific time. So this is your almanac data. Ephemeris data, these are the precise data for a specific satellite and its position. So this is the ephemeris data. And the pseudo random code, it is a signal, okay, a particular code. Why it is known as a pseudo random code? Because that particular signal is something like a noise signal. So that's why it is known as a pseudo random code. Not exactly a code, pseudo random, okay, pseudo random code. This is very important, very interesting code, this is. I'm coming to it again, pseudo random code. Now this is the ephemeris, okay. So high orbit, very stable orbit, no atmospheric drag disturbances because of the you know high frequency uh, you know wavelength we have and uh, from this from the satellites they are sending their ephemeris data to the monitoring stations and monitoring stations transmit the data to the user segment this is the ephemeris data okay that means the where that particular satellite is located at a particular point of time this is very and in in this standard gps things uh, in the display you will be able to locate the ephemeris also Yes, they send a kind of a graphical map of the ephemeris. Okay? In some of these you know, handle GPS system. Not in all. Now, this is how GPS works, as I have already mentioned, but one specific point you need to remember. Okay? This is trial iteration, which is I'm coming to uh, describe again. Why this? What is trial iteration and why it is important to, to have our location on the art service? Rest I have already covered, like the accurate clock is required, ephemeris corrected for atmospheric and ionosphere disturbances, and differential corrections. Now, the best part is that we need not to bother for all these things. These are taken care of by the control segments. Okay? So they corrected everything and send those corrected messages to us, to the users. So user segment. This is very important. The range measurement. It is very important to know for the locational information, to solve the locational question, it is very important to know the range measurement. What is the range measurement? You see, uh, it is also beautifully explained in your uh, study material. Like, there is a time lag between the sound and light, right? Light travels faster than sound, okay? Now, from a specific point, okay, if you'd like to see that, if you see a thunderstorm, and you heard that uh, the sound of the thunderstorm. If you get, can get the time difference, okay, and if you multiply it with, with the speed of time, the speed of light, then you will be able to get the, your exact distance from that particular point. Okay, same same idea. The the particular signal from the GPS travels at the speed of light. Okay, speed of light, which is three three into ten to the power eight meter per second. Speed of light. Okay. Now, which is uh, speed of light less by any atmospheric disturbances, which is taken care of the control segment, okay? And speed of light and the travel time, 
if you get the travel time and the speed of light, you will be able to get the distance, your distance from that particular satellite. So this is the range measurement is all about. Okay? So why this range measurement is important? Why this range measure, measurement is important? Why should we know the uh, why should we know the uh, you know the our distance from the satellite? You see the pseudo random code I have referred. Okay? The, our receiver doesn't receive the pseudo random code. Okay? The same code is also generated by our receivers. Okay? Same code. Now it actually compares the the difference between these two specific nodes of that particular code. And that, that difference is your time difference. See. See? Pseudo random code from the SBs, space vehicle, that means the satellites, and the pseudo random code from the GPS receiver. Okay? Now can you see there's a time difference of this particular specific code? Okay? So that time difference, okay? into multiplied by the speed of light, you will be able to get the di distance from the specific satellite. Okay? So that's why the pseudo random code is such an important part. Okay? It matches, it gives us the time lag. Okay? The time lag, it can be due to atmospheric delay also. Okay? These are the things that, it, that, that, that signal takes some time to travel minus your atmospheric delay. So all these are taken care of and you will be able to understand that particular time lag, and if you multiply with the speed of light, you will be able to get your distance from the satellite. After knowing your distance from the satellite, it is very easy to solve your x, y coordinate information. Okay? Now, this is the method of trial equation. Now, you, all, you must remember, this is very important thing. See, zero random codes, we, as a part of our syllabus, we need not to know much more about the pseudo random codes, you know, its characteristics and all. We, we only have to understand the time lag. Okay. But this trial equation is very important. You see, to get a precise location on the Earth's surface, the minimum requirement is the four satellites. You must receive at least signals from the four satellites. Why? Because in this locational equation, you have to solve four things. One is your x coordinate, one is your y coordinate, that means latitude, longitude, altitude, and you have to take care of that time lag. So x, y, z, and t. So these are the four things. Okay? For that, the minimum requirement is the four satellites. Okay? The, what is the then process of the trial iteration? So the process of trial iteration is why do we need the fourth satellite actually? What is the requirement of the fourth satellite? Now you see, suppose we are getting the signal from a single satellite. It will help us to show that we are on the surface of Earth. Somewhere on the surface of Earth. Okay? Now the second satellite will bring us within this particular area. Okay. Now we know that we are located somewhere here. This is the role of the second satellite. It reduces. Okay. Earlier, we, we, are, we know that we are somewhere on the surface of the earth. Now our location got reduced to within this zone. No. Now the third satellite will bring us down to two specific points. Because the third satellite will cut into two points of this particular surface. See? Third satellite. And the fourth one will give us our exact location. See? Fourth one will give us our exact location. So this is a graphical representation of the same thing. The fourth one is giving us our exact location here. Okay? So that's why we need these four satellites. Okay? More than four. It depends. But you cannot rely on the locational data if it is given by less than four satellites. It will be erroneous. Sorry, I thought I was going to come in. 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 
কিন্তু কত আছো সেটা আমি না জানি দুটা হলে আমি জানি যে এটা ডাঙর সার্কেলৰ ভিতৰত আমি আছো এটা এটা সেমি সার্কেল টাইপৰ বস্তু এটা ইলিপসয়ড টাইপৰ বস্তু এটা তাৰ ভিতৰত আমি কোবাত আছো তিন নম্বৰটো আমাক দুটা পইন্টত লৈ যাব আৰু চাৰি নম্বৰটো এক্সেক্ট লোকেচনটো কব সেখানে আমাক মিনিমাম ৰিকুৱাৰমেন্টটো হ'ল চাৰি আৰু ইনি আমি যদি ইফ ইউ হেভ টু ইফ ইউ গো থ্রু দ্যাট ইউ নো আই এম নোইং থিংস লাইক এক্স ওয়াই জি এণ্ড টি X, Y, Z basically three elements we need to know. That's why we need a four satellites. Okay. Now the use of GPS need not to explain. We are using it extensively into our day-to-day -day life. From the CV, we use like your aviation, in, uh, you know, personal navigation, tracking, shipping, surveying, recreation. You know. Nowadays, we always try. If you have to go somewhere, you just take help of the Google Map. So this is a locational service. Okay, if you have to order something, you have to call for a cab, or if you have to ask for your dinner or lunch, the Zomato and all these apps are working on the GPS system only, right? Okay. So now uh, tracking in case of the animals, surveying the animals, it is very useful. The tracking, then your uh, navigation, like you know the maps we are using for the navigational purposes. Okay, the Google Map and other services we are using. Uh, then uh, this is. navigation on ground air everywhere we can use okay so air navigation is also you know it's much easier now with the help of gps okay uh for field digitization field survey like uh, you know that uh, surveying a rail road or the drainage system okay or uh, any 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 roads kind of a thing it is very useful uh open pit mining survey precision agriculture nowadays it is being used in precision agriculture also for harvesting okay so this is a robotic harvesting you need not to go along with the harvesters okay you can lay down the track along which you want your harvester to move the harvester will move on that particular track and the track will be a line which is a, which is a combination of points we know right that line is a combination of points so this gps information the locational information you incorporate in the harvester the harvester will automatically harvest your agricultural product very easy okay construction okay so these are the new use but there are some disadvantages of this gps system okay the what is the gps what is the you know the most important these about is that uh, gps needs to see the sky all the time okay any obstruction is not good okay this is the basic thing you have to remember like you are in a middle of a uh, like uh, in a city center where there are skyscrapers or you are inside a building you cannot get a precise locational information okay this is the disadvantage it always needs to see the clear sky no tunnel coverage okay in underwater Hmm? No clear sky. If you do not, if you do not see the sky, then your uh, the locational information will be erroneous. Okay. Uh, it gives us our coordinates into a worldwide data. So data means the reference from point from where we calculate our altitude. So have you heard a term like mean sea level? Always, you know, 50 meter from mean sea level. So that mean sea is a reference. Okay. So this the World Geodetic System 1984. This is a standard data, the reference from where we calculate our altitude. WGS 84. This is a worldwide data. So it gives us our altitude information in that particular worldwide data. And it is an ellipsoidal data. We understand the ellipsoid, right? You know that ellipsoid which resembles the shape of the Earth. It's an ellipsoidal data. Okay. What is the problem with the ellipsoidal data? Ellipsoidal data, as as I have already mentioned, we are using the GPS for um, surveying. Okay, but for surveying, we need a very precise locational information. Okay, this means a very localized location, uh, you know, information. This localized information cannot be achieved by the ellipsoidal data. Okay, so it can give us the ellipsoidal height, not orthometric height. Actually, we know that the surface of the Earth is not that smooth. Okay, there are ups and downs. There are mountains like Mount Everest, deep trenches like Mariana Trench. Okay, so which has its own, uh, you know, influence in the plumb bog when you try to locate your particular point where you are standing. So it doesn't. <coughs> uh, so if you need a very precision survey, very localized survey, then you have to rely on. You cannot rely on the WGS 84 data. 
okay, which is a worldwide data given by the WGS84. So for that you need some advanced technologies. Okay, so that would be all for the GNSS part.